I'm not a basher of cold steel knives. In fact, just the opposite. I think cold steel does a very good job of offering a lot of different knives at a reasonable price with reasonable materials, i.e. maybe not the top-notch steels, but steels that will serve their purpose, especially at the price point. Now, I also love Spyderco, I love Benchmade, I love Kershaw, I love K-Bar, I love all those manufacturers. They're great. They offer great blades, many wonderful designs with good quality at their price point. But I'm also a, a lover of Cold Steel. They do a, a lot of good with their blades. And they do designs that few others do. This Peacekeeper 2 Dagger is a good example of that. Now, again, what category are we in? We're in fixed blade tactical knives, specifically meant for killing people, truth be told, offensively or defensively. If you're a trooper or a civilian where it's legal to carry this, this would be an option for you. If you can, on your person and in your carry, carry system, manage to carry a fixed blade knife of this size, which isn't huge, I mean, overall length on this blade is all, is sub 10 inches. So it's not a huge fixed blade, but then again, it's a lot bigger than a folding tactical knife. That's something you're gonna have to decide. Now, that being said, there's a lot of things we gotta discuss about the Peacekeeper. Uh, first off, I'm gonna talk about its huge advantage, and that is the weight. If we weigh this knife out, and we'll bring the digital scale over here so you can see it real time. I put the sheath and the blade on top of the scale. It may, weighs an amazing 7.6, 7.8 ounces. That's light. And in fact, you saw me pull the Peacekeeper 2 out when I was doing my zero tolerance 302 and 200 review videos, KRVs, knife review videos. That's a, a lot of knife at this weight. In fact, if you're talking defensive purposes only, the Peacekeeper 2 blows away those ZT knives because it has better reach and it's five and a half inch blade as opposed to a three and a half inch blade. So it's got two inches more reach than the ZTs. Now, I'm comparing it against a folding knife. Now there's other folding design, or I'm sorry, dagger designs, which I also like. I've done a review on my favorite of all time. That's a cold steel Taipan. And then the Boker Desert Dagger. Also, you'll see my review on the SOG Dagger an excellent dagger design. There's a lot of good designs which are mass produced that are available to you at a reasonable cost. However, this is the cheapest and highest value dagger I have ever found. Now my version is in 420 stainless steel. Specifically, Cold Steel at the time they made this blade about five years ago was using 420 sub-zero quench stainless steel which I've had good experiences with. As I mentioned in my OSS video the Cold Steel OSS review video. It's a good steel for what it is. I would like to have OS 8 or 154 CM or heck even S30 V for that matter but it's going to add a lot more cost to an otherwise affordable blade. Therefore you need to be realistic in your expectations. And also this is a limited application knife. This isn't something I would EDC with. Go around thrashing and cutting with constantly. At least in the way I plan to employ the blade. And that being said, since it is a limited use steel, does it really matter what steel we use within reason? I mean, all it really has to do is do a, a thrust cut. Or in the case of the Peacemaker, because it has that nice leaf-shaped blade towards the end, it has some belly towards the tip, you can slash with it. So in that limited use application, i.e. defensive, offensive uh, roles, man versus man, the steel is more than adequate. Like we said in other videos, prisoners use shivs all the time made out of plexiglass or plastic and they're very effective. So any kind of steel, the truth be told, employed in a defensive fashion, as long as it's sharpened, will work. So secondary purpose, or secondary um, to the steel type is how it's going to be employed. I'm sure, I should say primary to the steel type is how it's going to be employed. Now, this is 420 stainless steel. It's got that nice belly towards the, sh towards the tip. Five and a half inch blade, not overly big, but it's adequate, especially for the weight that we're talking about. 
And at the time, Cold Steel did a really nice bead blast on that blade, which I really think is attractive. This is an overseas produced knife, specifically in Taiwan. But in my experience, Cold Steel knows how to do quality control. In other words, they, they tell them, hey, these are the specifications we want on our blades, and they deliver. You might notice on my Cold Steel Peacemaker 2 that I'm showing you here, I have a more shallow grind on both edges done by, fit, by Razor's Edge in Salt Lake City. That makes it even more effective, especially if I decide to employ it in that slashing fashion that I was talking about. Heaven forbid, but this is a defensive knife. At least for me it is. And we only talk about how effective it would be in the thrust cut because obviously it would be devastating. Especially with that belly towards this end right here because it's just going to open up the wound e even better and provide less cutting resistance. I really like the blade shape on the Peacemakers. And like I said, I'll do a separate review on the Peacemaker 1. The handle is the Craton handle, which Cold Steel uses a lot in its more affordable blades, and it's integrally molded onto the hilt, and the hilt comes to probably right about here in the Peacemaker 2. And that's more than enough for this style of blade. I like Craton. The hit I'll give the Peacemaker 2 is it's too short, the handle is that is is that I would like to have another inch of length in that handle so I don't run out of real estate. Again, my hands are a little bit larger. If your hands are medium sized or smaller, you, you will probably have no problem at all with the Peacemaker 2. Decent. It's got the guards here to prevent your hand coming forward in the thrust attack. Will they capture and defeat an incoming blade action, acting as a trap? No, probably not. They'll shear right off but I don't plan on employing it knife versus knife. This is a backup weapon for me. Your mileage may vary. The thinness is nice too. The handle is provides great traction, but it's not too thick. It's probably, I don't know, about three quarters of an inch through that tapered or that bulged out middle, so decent. Overall, the balance and speed is lively of the Peacemaker too. I like it. How about the sheath? Well, I'm going to show you an older version of Peacemaker 2 here in a second, but the, the last version they produced was using the Conceal X, or I'm sorry, Secure X is their brand of plastic sheath. And that's all it is, is a plastic sheath, but I love it. It's great. Secures in nice and tight, no straps to fool around with. It just locks in. Part of the reason it locks in so nice is because of the Craton guard. It has some friction in that channel, the channel opening of the Secure X sheath and you can hear it snaps in. And you see how I extract it, I grab it, and then I just push my thumb against the sheath, voila. It's a one-handed extraction. Doesn't absorb water, and therefore it doesn't gain weight or rust the blade. Lots of lashing options with the sheath. You can put it on LBE gear. This would be a good vertical carry knife. And again, for you guys who don't know, LBE means load-bearing equipment, the kind that soldiers wear, the vertical nylon, weight bearing equipment they wear. So you could lash that to the vertical portion of your straps. Also it's got a belt loop here with a very effective retention strap. That's the good side. The bad side is is this sheath will migrate around on you. If you don't lock it in between loops or do something to strap on your belt it will slip around because that will not lock onto your belt. And like I've discussed in some of my other videos a defensive blade needs to be consistent in its presentation on your person. Therefore, you know exactly where it is and your muscle memory can remember that because you probably will not be thinking clearly under stress. Peacemaker 2 in 420 stainless steel. Now here's an older one in carbon 5. And this one had the older sheath. This was a Kydex sheath that Cold Steel used to make probably about seven years ago. And honestly, I like the Securex sheath a little bit better has more lashing capability. But this Kydex sheath is still good and you can see it has a little bit different style of capture groove. This one has a baked on enamel finish and this particular example has a little bit more belly than that other one does. And it is in the Carbon 5 proprietary steel by Cold Steel. Everything else is the same. By the way, Carbon 5 is an excellent steel. At least in my experience. And in this dagger, it would be more than efficient. Now the advantage of the stainless steel is that it's more rust resistant and when you're carrying a backup defensive blade that might be better. Unfortunately the Peacekeeper 2 has been discontinued so if you want it you better buy it now. They may come back, maybe not.